Art is a big connector. It's a big connector in ways that we don't know. When we put our art out there, we have no idea how it's gonna connect. And I'm gonna tell you a story about my experience with that. My experience with that, let's start at the very beginning, was I painted, I was painting pet friends every day. I was painting a, a dog every day. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of pet friends. Um, and that was the core of my business. I always say that the dogs taught me how to paint. I painted uh, dogs and cats, so many pet friends. Um, and so I, I was committed to daily painting, certainly for five years uh, in a row. Um, but I didn't always paint pets. You know, sometimes I would paint something different. And one day I painted a, a picture of a little girl writing with chalk on the sidewalk. And a person commented on it. It happened to be the mother of the child. And she said, oh, I just love this. I wish that I could purchase it. I wish I could afford to purchase it. And the next thing that happened was uh, someone who had left comments on my postings before said, I would really, uh, you know, messaged me and said, I would really like to buy this painting for this person. And so that's what she did. She bought the painting for the person and I figured out through a mutual friend who the person was and how to send the address. And it was a big surprise. And it was just such a loving thing to do, to send this painting of this little girl to her mother. It really had an impression on me. My friend died two days ago and uh, she hadn't been sick for very long. Um, And she was more than just a virtual friend on, uh, you know, on on screens. We talked on the phone. Uh, she certainly shared her adventures when she would travel. She was an intrepid traveler, a fantastic writer, had had a tremendous professional career as a film crit critic. So she knew language really, really well. And she would keep me informed about what was currently happening in the museums. She lived in New York City, and so she would go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and you know, show me, give me the eyes into the world that she was seeing, which was just so exciting to me. Um, she also could be firstly critical if I did something that she really didn't like. If it was a painting she didn't like, she'd, she'd let me know. Uh, but I appreciated that. And she also, um, would let me know if I pronounce something wrong, like in one of these videos. And I have in front of me uh, still the little cheat sheet that I made from her suggestions. Her cheat sheet for um, how to say alizarin correctly, which I usually do now. I used to call it a, a, alizarin. <laughs> and I used to call arch paper arches. And so I keep that right here uh, because she spelled it out phonetically for me so that I would get it correctly. And, and during the transition between saying it correctly and not saying it correctly, you should say, whoops, you know, you messed up there. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I did. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Um, but she cared, you know, it was coming from a place of, of caring. It wasn't coming from a place of criticism in any way. Um, more recently, which is just amazing to me because I hadn't realized that um, her health had gotten uh, really difficult um, since Christmas time, really. Um, she had sent a gift to Henry, our new Collie rescue dog. It was a lovely gift from L.L. Bean with Henry's name on it, and he sleeps with it every night. He treasures that blanket. And I just find it astounding that she would think about Henry, you know, and us, during a time when she probably wasn't feeling really up to it. Last summer, she had a um, 80th birthday, and so there was a virtual card party, a surprise party that her daughter put together. And because of COVID virus, people couldn't be in the same room, of course, so it was done on Zoom. And so it was fun to participate in that. And, and her smile was just so big, I'll just never forget how excited she was about that. Because she wasn't a very demonstrative person, um, as far as I could tell, but you could you could feel you could feel the feels through the through the Zoom, and so um, that allowed me to be in touch with her daughter and know a little bit more about her daughter's life as well. And um, during this last month, I I, I was aware that uh, that she was having difficult some difficulties, and so um, I organized how to get some um, you know some soups and some treats to her to maybe stimulate her appetite. But it was a very big surprise to find out um, two days ago that she passed. I'm grateful that she didn't suffer for, for very long. And um, she always, every, every time she would send a email or anything in writing, her uh, sign off was always the word onward. 
you know she didn't suffer fools in any way you know she might write something you know somewhat like provocative you know and post it there on Facebook not to be mean or anything just because she was a thinker and then she you know would write onward you know it's like because that's what she was she's definitely moving forward in life not one to dwell I'm not saying she wasn't sensitive I just think she was really fully in the thing which I strive to do so yesterday it hit me pretty hard to find out that she was no longer here and uh, <clears throat> you know I'm, I'm having a little bit of a pity party for myself about that because I also know every time I kind of stalled and couldn't get something done or, or got lost in, in all the feels yesterday I just said to myself onward onward because that's what she would say but I wanted you to know that art can change people Art and connections can change people. And Susan definitely changed my life for, for the better. Sometimes she would post and just write, um, not that it was coming from her, she would write, Dulcie says, because Dulcie was her like 17 year old cat or something. That cat was really, really old. And I thought, oh no. Um, luckily, Dulcie is with her daughter now. Um, but it's pretty astounding that. Uh, that Dulcie outlived her. I would not have expected that. But I wanted I wanted to share how much she mattered and how much she mattered to me. Her name was Susan Stark. She lived in New York City. And she took the time to be my friend. And I'm truly blessed and grateful for that. Uh, I forgot to say that she was also a watercolorist. And uh, so she's definitely part of the tribe. But she was, um, she, she embraced all the arts and artists in general. And um, I, I, hope, I hope to go forward and, and, uh, and live the way she taught me. Okay, bye-bye.